I grew up in Macon, Mississippi. I was born in Macon area. And I grew up in Macon until I was at age 13, at which time I moved to Birmingham, Alabama. And from Birmingham, Alabama, I moved to Chicago at the age 15. And I've been in the Chicago area ever since. My first address was 1540 South Holman Avenue on the west side of Chicago. That was always my ambition to play music. So I had an uncle that lived in Chicago that, as a matter of fact, invited me to Chicago for that reason, to become a blues musician. So I got to meet people like Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf, Jimmy Reed, Elmore James, and I would just go to blues clubs every night and just listen to blues. And I, I was very interested. So I got my first guitar shortly after. And I just started to practice and go out and listen to people. That gave me a lot of inspiration by listening to other guys like, like Magic Sam. A little later on, when I was here for a while, I got to meet Magic Sam and Otis Rush. Eventually, they, they found out who I was and found out I was a musician. And then Magic Sam, especially, would call me up to play. So did Otis Rush and people like that. I performed the band in, uh, in the early 50s, a, a trio, I formed a trio. And uh, I would go around and do auditions at clubs. And then, if you didn't have a name, you'd have to go in and ask the club owner. If you could do an audition, you'd ask him for a job. And, and they'd say, well, come in, bring your band in, let me hear you. And if we like you, then we'll hire you. I never liked to just stand there and play. I wanted to use the energy that, that comes from myself. I like to perform as well as just uh, play, the, play and sing the songs, you know. I like to give it something more than that. I first started recording at 50, 57 or 58. My first record was a song called Boogie Woogie Baby and the Hillbilly Blues on the flip side. It was a 78, 78, so. Uh, and what label was that on? That was on my, uh, my uncle that invited me to Chicago, my uncle Houston Harrington. On the time, it had a little label called Atomic H Records. Okay. So that was my first attempt to go into a a recording studio and record. I branched out little by little in the in the Illinois area. I would go places like say Peoria, say Rockford, and um, different places, or maybe downstate. You know, you know. I learned that from a. He was once my agent and. A, and my booking agent, my booking agent, a guy named Jump Jackson, he was with the Musicians Union, so he took me in to book me. So he said, I gotta teach you the ropes, so, you know, I had to charge that union scale with the Musicians Union and the whole bit, and the whole, how to go about booking jobs and uh, going from place to place. The hardest thing about the job was getting paid at that time. <laughs> if they didn't have any people, Say you're playing tonight, if there's no people, then there's no money. <laughs> and that was in 1976. A friend of mine had this headdress and she invited me to a party after a gig one night. She was a bartender at the club where I worked, at the Trieste Lounge in Westmont, Trieste. And she had it hanging on the wall. And uh, I said, that's a beautiful piece, I'd like to have that to wear for my stage appearance. She said, well, I can't sell it to you because it belonged to my deceased husband. So from time to time after that, I kept mentioning it, the fact that I really was interested in it. So she said, I'll tell you what, I won't sell it to you, but I'll give it to you as a good luck charm, providing you never part with it. So we shook hands on it that night, and she handed it to me, and she said, it's yours. <laughs> My first European tour was in 1976 with myself, Buddy Guy, and Junior Wells, 
and Jimmy Johnson and Huma, Hubert Sumlin. It was a 21-day tour. That was my very first tour in Europe. For some reason, you always get more recognition when you leave home than you do in your hometown. They know which record you made, what year you made it in, and who, they know who, which musicians recorded on the session. They know the whole story. It's, it's very impressive. Before I went to Europe the first time, I talked with Muddy and I said, I'm going to be doing my first European tour. I asked him, how, how should I conduct myself? He said, when you go there, don't try to be fancy. Just play like you play and just be yourself. He said, they'll accept you. And I did that, and I've, I've been going back ever since. As a matter of fact, I'm working on a new album now. Uh, to, to get it all, trying to get it all put together. So I intend to continue doing what I'm doing and try to make the best of it. <laughs>